All right, so let's let's start talking about the thing that probably everyone in chat is here for, which is the Firefly reboot. And this is one of the reasons we wanted to have the podcast on because they recently made a fantastic video about this. Now, just to set the stage, uh, ever since Disney bought Fox and they got the rights to Firefly along with that that purchase, um, there's been talk about Disney like rebooting Firefly and making it like a Disney Plus original series and all that stuff. And in fact, there was a there was a news article that came out not too long ago that I tweeted about. And um, one of the actors from Firefly, William Baldwin, uh, responded to me in the DM. Adam Baldwin, right? At Adam Baldwin. Sorry. Adam Baldwin, yeah. Uh, Adam Baldwin. Yeah. Jane. Not, not part of the Alec Baldwin uh, yeah, it's, uh, no family. Yeah, yeah. He, he, no relation. Just, just yeah. same last name. Anyway, he reached out to me and and he said that it was BS. Uh, nobody was going to be rebooting Firefly, at least to his knowledge. But Brian has some interesting uh, inside information on what's going on with that. So, Brian, can you take us through uh, like what you've heard and, and what we can be expecting for a Firefly reboot? Yeah. So originally. The, the journalist that wrote that didn't share any sources or have any, any information or whatever. She, she literally just wrote an article that said, this is the reboot that Disney's doing. Here's their plans. They're making it family friendly. Um, some of what she said was correct in, in the sense where some older characters will come on as narrators and and um, guides through the, through the, uh, the extending of this universe. But the majority of what she was saying was, Un, 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 uh, not verifiable. No way to verify it, no sources. So we reached out to her. She didn't respond initially. She eventually did, but um, at the time of the first video we made, we reached out to his name, reached out to everyone. No one responded. We made the video anyways, and we said, like, hey, look, here, you know, we see what how, how she could be correct, but because there's no sources, even though it's a, the source, you know, the website has been operating, um, flawlessly <laughs> as a news source since the 90s no reason for us not to believe it but because she didn't give any sources we didn't believe it and um then we got a an email from someone saying that they were close to the production in some way um or close to the team that was created uh, that was actually assigned to firefly um at disney and then we thought it was nonsense we, listen we get a lot of those emails just so you guys know if you're ever trying to prank us, we get a lot of those emails. A lot of people try to try to reach out and become insiders, and um, 99.999% of them aren't real. I have no information. Well, I know I've just made up some stuff and sent emails before just to see what you do. Right, and we yeah. have friends on YouTube that have that have made entire <laughs> productions around uh, inside sources. <laughs> and we've had listen i'm not gonna not name name names but we have friends that have made videos that have gotten hundreds of thousands of views based on the same source that we saw in this in an email and said that's nonsense and, yeah. and just deleted it um they just went on to continue to make videos so we didn't we didn't initially take it uh, seriously we did respond and we said you know hey listen Great information. He he had more information than other people did. So um, we said, if you can verify your source some way, and he sent us. We saw his social media. We saw he was who he was connected to. He we even saw we even got a picture. We even got a picture. <laughs> he he was very thorough in his um, proving to be a source. And um, so then we got to pick his, pick his brain. And from uh, from what we well from what we gathered, they are. It's very early, obviously, but there is an active project for the reboot of Firefly. It's going to continue the the legacy of Firefly, ignoring the events of the movie, continuing from the TV show, um, ignoring the events of the movie, probably because the movie just pretty much rehashed the TV show and then killed Wash, right? So they're going to continue on from the TV show. Um, family friendly is not the correct word for it because it's it's usually it's using the same team that um, um, uh, Mandalorian and Boba Fett and that team. Um, Favreau's people are involved. Um, they're actually in the middle of financing it. So this is how early it is. They're actually setting up the finance. And the guy 
who's in charge of some of the um the story points and all that is uh is connected to our source and what he said was they're gonna start dipping a little firefly into upcoming stuff and the older characters like mal and nathan fillion and jane uh adam baldwin um i'm not sure about adam baldwin but the older characters will be involved as narrators and sort of like your guide to the firefly universe in the same way when we first opened up uh, Firefly and Serenity, how that sort of disem disembodied voice was explaining the universe, that will be the the older characters sort of explaining what the newer characters are dealing with. So they won't be a part of the show in the tr traditional sense. Um, well, is, is it a new crew that we're following? It'll probably be a new crew, and we didn't get a lot of information on that. But it'll probably it'll be new actors and a new crew. And what we'll do is we'll get we'll get we'll get um, cameos from the old crew and. Uh, someone big will be the overall narrator for the first season. And that was their idea. So probably Nathan Fillion or who knows. I mean, they're going to have to do something to bridge the gap and to make the old fans accept this, right? I mean, then the way to do right. that is to, you know, have some, you know, so, so, some familiarity with the old show going into the new show. So. Yeah, fun yeah, fact, they, they, Nathan Fillion is, is a Disney employee. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know that, but like his last three or four projects have all been either Fox or <clears> Disney. <throat> so he's he's working very closely at Disney. It's just it's just not obvious because they're um it's not a Disney, you know, cartoon or Marvel or whatever. I mean, actually I think he did some Marvel stuff too. So anyways, um yeah, so that's that's the news. I mean, and the, there's a little the more suicides. He, he was in the suicide squad. Real quick, Ensign Ricky for two dollars says, "Hey man, at Brian, good to see you. Hope all is well. Good to see you. Yeah. So uh, the details are it's not going to be family friendly in that sense. Um, it's going to be it's going to it's going to be more like Mandalorian or or um, I guess Boba Fett, sort of Bad Batch style. And I'm assuming that's the style. There's hiring that the same team in um." that are working on those shows are going to be working on Firefly. And it makes sense. You know, Space Western, it's the same style. It makes complete sense. Just lost Sean. Space Western. Huh? <laughs> well, no, I mean... That's what Firefly is. Firefly uh, yeah. is Cowboy Bebop of live yeah. action. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And, I mean, it, that's one of the things that it felt like, because I, I had to revisit Firefly, uh, uh, you know, the, the first episode last night, because I... I watched the first episode when it premiered um, out of curiosity and it, you know, really didn't grab me. So I, I revisited it last night um, and it felt very Star Wars-y to me. It, it, it felt like it could be very easily in the same universe. Are you watching um, it correctly though? Because they yeah. aired it out of order. Yeah. That, yeah, I know. I, it was, it was, yeah. They, they screwed up the, all the, the, the order. I mean, I just, I just revisited the first episode and, and it was, it, it it didn't grab me because I, I I'm one of these I'm a pessimistic optimist, which is one of the reasons why Star Wars or Star Trek always appealed to me was because it's humanity. It's not a dystopian. It's a utopian type of future. Um, and every other science fiction franchise, except for the Orville, is all, you know, dystopian. And this is just another one of those type of everything's dirty and worn out and everything. And I mean, it, I, I guess it, it, you know, it has potential. I guess, well, like universe, everything, there's no a, there's no aliens. No, th that's what it felt like. It felt like Star Earth. Wars with no aliens, um, or, or Persephone, right? That was the planet. There was no, yeah. There's no, there was no aliens. Yeah. There's no um, hyperdrive or whatever. Right, and that was the other thing too that I noticed. I was like, wait, minute, those look like rocket engines. Um, very impractical for interstellar travel. You're not going to. Well, get not, it's not. There, that. there is no interstellar travel. It's not. That's not how they operate. Every, the universe is so much smaller um, in Firefly. Everything's operating from like a handful of. Uh... Uh, re real quick, guys. Uh, we got a five dollar five dollar super chat from Joker Voice. Got a scoot. Ooh. Great, great stream. Cool panel. Like, subscribe, and share the Salty Nerd podcast. Check out my channel as well. Hashtag Keep Talking. Thank you very great. much, Joker. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. So, real quick, Andre and Rico had a uh, question about: Will Yas Whedon be involved? 
he created it. Doesn't Disney have to consult him? The answer is no. No. <laughs> uh, what is that? What is that buzzing? Somebody. Oh. Buzzing and clicking something. Sorry, that's a, a call coming in from a colleague. Oh, yeah, okay. Joss Whedon is. Um, yeah, he, he he's he going to be around for a while. He's gone. <laughs> he's canceled. He's canceled. <laughs> he is, but also like you know, Fox owned that IP just because yeah. Joss Whedon created it doesn't mean he owned it. So uh, a whole new creative team is coming in uh, and, right. and taking it over. I'm Another reason so to ignore the movie is because Sony had distribution rights for Serenity. Mm -hmm. So I, I was actually surprised that they were going to ignore the movie because like the, the movie was actually very good. Very good. It, it, it kind of set up like, like it, it set up further like, you know, stories, but it also kind of brought the whole like summer glow um, storyline to conclusion. And uh, it was just, uh, I, I liked the movie a lot. Um, so I'm surprised that they're just going to ignore it. It's on my top five, uh, Ser the Serenity and Stargate. You know, uh, Serenity is an amazing film. Um, except for the problem with Serenity from a fan perspective is that it was made assuming that you had not seen the TV show. So it actually recapped a lot of the TV show, sort of telling the same story. Serenity was like, Here's the movie version of, you know, what Joss wanted to do in the TV show had it not been canceled. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I was. Can I can I ask though? I mean, do they ever explain the distances that they're talking about with these? You know, I mean, because it it really bugs me um, when they just make it so easy to you know go from one place to another. Um, I yeah, mean, I, I, I don't know exactly or? how the universe works. I, uh, off the top of my head, I would have looked, but it's not in the same sense. It's not like um, Star Trek where they're warping to different systems, and it's not like yeah, it's not like hyperspace in Star Wars. Everything's a little more practical, and everything's built around the idea. Let's say, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in a thousand years, who's the superpowers on Earth? You got China and the U.S. and whoever else, right? And they sort of become like this sort of amalgamation of uh, pop culture and. And language and 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 um, they uh, become finance the, and empire, right? Right, and so then they yeah. they go out into the universe and into the solar system, expanding, and so our language and the way we talk and our culture and what we eat and what we watch and sort of like the aesthetics of everything is sort of an amalgamation of these cultures, the Western and the Eastern cultures, and I love the the way they speak and their slang is it just. It's not. <clears throat> here's the future. We all talk the same. Yeah. Also, um, in the in the colonization of the verse, as they call it, um, right. it's it's all very low tech. Like like you get out there and it, it is just like the the homesteaders from the old west, where they're right. out out on these random planets that don't have access to technology, and uh, you have like these weird space pirates called Reapers, and uh, the Empire had something to do with the creation of them. And at the center, there's this like civil war where the, the people who went out and kind of colonized all these new planets uh, rose up against the empire and the empire ended up winning. So the bad guys won. And uh, the crew of the Serenity were like holdovers from, they call them the brown coats. Right. Like it's like the, the civil the, war. The rebels. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it, it, it feels a lot like the expanse, which I'm more familiar with, but, um, and I mean, cause it, it, you know, it's, it's almost the same type of thing, but the expanse does make, more logical sense because they explain it it's all within our star system but um i i think i don't know if uh i guess if favro and uh, you know the same people are involved they might do it some justice but i, I do agree that it's going to be difficult selling a brand new cast to people because they're not coming back for anything other than nostalgia you know, the, yeah the nostalgia bait and i mean uh, they, i mean dude the universe you know. is so rich though i would love to see anything expanding that universe like katis just mentioned that is the tip of the iceberg there's mm -hmm. so there's so much to it and when they set up even like i said even as the little things like the way they talk their slang it's so integrated everything feels once you're there everything feels so um real and 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 it just sort of works like even their own they tell jokes inside the show in the movies using their own slang where if you're not a fan you won't get the <laughs> you joke. won't get it right yeah i mean you know that's kind of cool because there is ain't nothing twitch my nethers yeah. ain't run on batteries in weeks also uh <laughs> there's been some rumors out there that they're going to be kind of combining it with star wars 
I've just heard that they're no. just going to be, be doing like little Easter eggs and Star Wars. It's just Wars. Easter eggs. They're not going to combine yeah. it. There's, yeah, what they're going to do like... is they're going to throw a Firefly Firefly yeah. class ship in the back of a shot somewhere. Just to be, sort like of... in a, be like in a, the prequels when when they put the Enterprise flying through in Coruscant, right? Right. And, 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 and yeah, it's fine. They did that? Yeah. yeah. I missed yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and really? in Star Trek, yeah. in Star Trek yeah. First Contact, a Millennium Falcon flies in the mm-hmm. background. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, you know, when it comes to um, Firefly, <laughs> I, 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 I have a confession to make, guys. Um, I've only watched half of the, the original run of Firefly. I'm so jealous of you right now. I'm so I, jealous. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I couldn't get into it. I, yeah. I, had a, I, I had a hard time with this show. and But it's been so long now. Um, I don't really remember why. Watch the movie, dude. There, there was something. There was something there. Maybe it was my mindset at the time. Maybe I was too busy yeah. raiding or something in molten core with my forty man group or something. I don't know. Um, but there was Did something. There was yeah, <laughs> There was there was something else in my life that just kept me away from Firefly. So I think I'm going to just take a vow to the nerds and to you guys now. I will get caught up and have an actual opinion. On Firefly in the next few months. I'm just you know, gonna, I, I'm, we're, we're, I'm we're probably gonna do it if you watch the movie before the TV show because everyone watches the TV show in the movie. I want to know what happens in reverse. Vader, I, we're probably gonna do Firefly yeah. for one of our Patreon. Yeah, but that's uh, only gonna months. be four episodes. So I'm gonna but I'm gonna have to watch the whole thing because well, it's the, only it's only 16 episodes or something like that, right? 14, no. yeah. I, well, and I only season. watched the first episode, so that was yeah. it, it never grabbed me either. I was and did you watch the of, correct you know, first episode though? I have no idea. No, because no, they, he watched it when it premiered. Oh, because okay, so they aired it way out of order. So yeah, was, I, I understand that. Yeah, I, 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 I it was like they they aired like episode five and then eight and then one and then three. You, you, you know weird. what this is? This would be a really good discussion on our Discord server on our in our coming soon Firefly section about the proper order to watch this series in. So, uh, so we'll have to make that happen. So we have a I, we have a I firefly do, do, doc do, that explains it. If you want, I do want to watch it in the correct order when I start watching it. Probably in the next couple of weeks, I'll I'll start doing that. So, yeah, yeah. I revisited the the premiere episode, you know, last night just to refresh my memory because it it didn't grab me. So, um, and I didn't see Serenity. So I I, I mean I'd be coming in kind of fresh. Serenity right, is a great but, movie. Yeah, it was my my top five sci sci fi movies for myself, and I'm a and I'm and I'm a I'm a basic sci-fi fan. I don't. I don't get into it deep, but it's like Star, Star, Stargate, Star Trek, Serenity, Fifth Element, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry, those four. I, my my fifth one would probably be one of the Star Wars movies, but I couldn't tell you which one. I'm actually surprised they haven't made a Fifth Element TV show yet. Right? Right? Sure Where's that will. at? It's such a rich Lilu, right? <laughs> um. That'd I want to see. I want to see. Uh, well, uh, Multipass. Multipass. Chris Rock. Or whatever. What was that guy's name? Yeah, Chris Tucker. Yeah, only Chris if he's Tucker. in it. He's if he's in it, I'm there. Uh, yeah. As Ruby Rod. <laughs> yeah. And you, and you guys know Bruce Wayne's doing it. This guy, this guy <laughs> will Willis. show up to Bruce Willis. Bruce, sorry, Bruce Willis. He'll show up to shoot if you give him like a hundred bucks and a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very disappointed in Bruce Willis's career track right now. I'm like, yeah, guy, really. This guy yeah. Shoot, he, you know he's like on like Bruce the, Willis doesn't give a fuck anymore. He's on the fourth no. sequel of a of a franchise that I didn't even know. If you go to his IMDb, he's like he's doing like like the Frontier Seventeen. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's the weirdest thing, dude. They they pay him like millions of dollars to show up for like two days of shooting, and he yeah. and they, they 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 shoot him out, and then the rest is just a stand in for like the back right. of his head and stuff. And he his phones head. it in. Yeah, it's that's greedy and lazy. He did a sci-fi movie where he played like a hologram or something. Oh god! Oh, we we reviewed that. That was uh, did you? Bre- that was Breach. Breach. Awful. Yes, Awful. I watched that movie and I was like, "What is happening yeah. right now?" Yeah. <laughs> we, we really need to quit watching so many bad movies, Matt, for our show. It's, it's uh, awful. Yeah, Br- Bruce. <laughs> yeah, Bruce. Yeah, so Bruce is not as bad as Nick Cage, but at least Nick whoa, Cage. Whoa. 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 But Nick Nick Cage leans into it. He'll be like, "Let me make a really good movie, then Listen, let me man. make like five really bad movies, and then one really good movie." Bruce Willis is just like, "Let's yeah. make nothing but bad movies." But you can yeah. always count on Nick Cage to give it his all. He, he yeah. swings for the fences. Everything he does. He does, no matter what the role, yeah. no matter what movie, it is. 
there's a movie coming out soon. I I forget the name of it where Nick Nick Cage plays Nick Cage. Himself, yeah, with yes, I can't wait to watch and, it. And, and, it <laughs> and it looks amazing. It's, it's, really good. it's called yeah. The Unbearable Weight of Immense Talent, I believe. Yeah. Really? Yeah, whatever Nick yeah. Cage yeah. does, he swings for the fences. And Bruce Willis nowadays is drunk half the time. <laughs> And it's oh, obvious it's a stand-in. When the camera moves angles, it's like a different person. Like the guy's three inches taller. Right. He has a right. tattoo on his shoulder. <laughs> He's barely trying. Yeah, wow. that's really bad. Uh, well, you know, hey. But you know, he it, he gets you know. paid a lot of money for doing like one day of work. So good for him. <laughs> hey man, good for him. Yeah. Not, not even mad. Good dude. Do what you gotta do. Yeah. All right. So uh if the Firefly reboot happens, will we be watching it, Vader? Yeah, oh, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, how yeah, could we not? You guys better be watching it with me. Yeah, I need to get yeah. invited to some of these uh, these cool Patreon things you guys do. Oh, definitely. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll get David Hewlett on with you. I have, I have no nerds to watch TV with. It's just me sitting here in my little office. Um, my wife occasionally comes in and throws food at me and then runs away. So <laughs> I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that as a bit of a segue um, on our Discord server, saltingerdiscord.com. Um, I know me personally, I host a viewing party, a watch party every Monday night. And I, but I do it late. I have to do it after the, the, sec, the better half of myself goes to sleep. But I always use that time to watch the Patreon show that we're going to go to the basement and, and record the next day. So it's fresh in my mind. So I host the watch party in our viewing channel every Monday night around 1030 is when I, when I do it. But you so, know, if our campaign to get 10,000 YouTube subscribers mm -hmm. and 1,000 Patreon followers uh, <laughs> succeeds, you'll have a lot more time to do that uh, this throughout is true. the week. This is true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get, I need a tattoo, guys. You make it happen. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So that is our show for today, everyone.